Alright guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing the new Generative Fill AI feature in Photoshop. You may have seen this online and I'm going to showcase with a couple of example pictures of how this works. So let's go ahead and dive straight in and see what this can do. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to mention is how to download this and use this auto generate fill AI feature. So if you have an Adobe Cloud subscription, you don't need to actually be paying for the subscription. I believe the beta version of Photoshop here is free. So you can open up Adobe Creative Cloud once you do download it for either Windows or Mac. Look for Photoshop beta and then download that and open this up and then you'll be able to use that feature. This is currently not available in the cloud subscription version of Photoshop. So just remember that when you are installing this. Once you do have it installed, you can go ahead and open up Photoshop Beta. I've got this photo of a nice house from Adobe stock Photoshop portfolio. So let's go ahead and play around with this. You'll notice as soon as you open a picture, you've got a little bar at the bottom here, which says select subject or remove background. This generally works very well when you have a portrait picture of someone. So I'm going to ignore that for now and I'll showcase that in the second picture that I'll showcase to you. So let's go ahead and try out some of the generative fill options. So you'll see this little option on the left hand side sidebar here called object selection tool you can press w if you select this it automatically highlights what it detects at different areas in the picture so let's go ahead and start off by changing something let's say the sky so i'm going to select that you'll see it pops up with another toolbar if you hit generative fill you can type in anything you want to replace that section of the photo because it is a daytime picture here i'm going to say night sky and hit generate so this will automatically start populating variations of different night sky images that it will populate in the background and you'd be able to select which ones you like. Now just remember this is a beta version so it might not work 100% accurate until the actual final public release of this. But let's see how it works. There you go. I think that looks really really nice. It's basically gathered all of the edges amongst those trees in the background and it makes it look like a very nice picture. On the right hand side here, you'll be able to see variations. It comes up with three at the moment. So if you cycle through these, you can actually select which one you like. So there's a few options here. Let's take a look. And I think this one looks more reasonable and it's not perfect, but I'm going to keep it like that. If you look by zooming in, you can see it didn't get exactly 100% accuracy amongst those trees. They are a little bit scattered in there, but for the most part, it's done a very good job to replace just that section by using the object selection rather than you doing a manual cutting selection. So now let's see what else we can do. I'm going to use the little lasso tool here and I'm going to just highlight an area here in the swimming pool because I'd like to maybe add someone that's swimming in there. So if I type in, let's say, person swimming, let's see how good this may work. Not too bad, it's given me a couple of other options. Let's take a look here. Looks quite funny to be honest, but yeah, let's stick with that one. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do one more. I'm gonna maybe add some birds sitting on the roof here. So generative fill, and I'll just type birds on roof. This looks pretty good. I'll keep it as that first one. I think that one's pretty nice. And you can see every time you've done a generative fill, it creates a smart object as a layer in the layer box here. So you can have a play around with it, try various different things in your photos and see how well it comes out. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it's come out from a very quick and easy way to generate certain types of objects, imagery, and backgrounds for your photos. Now, a lot of people may use this for portrait photography. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at one of the pictures I took last year of myself in the park sitting on this rock. But this time I'm going to use the remove background and select subject option here. So rather than just removing the entire background, I'm going to select myself. And it's done it very quickly and easily. It looks pretty accurate so far. But what I'm going to do is now right click and do select inverse so it does just the background. Once the background is selected, I'm now going to do the generative fill. 
in here I want to change maybe the background of where I'm sitting so if I say I don't want to sit in a park I can change it to maybe a cafe let's see what types of options this populates and see if it is actually accurate because I am sitting a little bit awkward and you can't see my entire left hand there so I want to see how well that would work not too bad actually it actually makes it look realistic but you can see if I zoom in here it's gone a little bit wonky on my face there let's see what the options they have and you'll notice with the hand it's tried to generate the hand maybe make it a fuller hand it didn't detect the position that it was in when you zoom out it does make it seem like I'm actually there which is a very nice thing if you go into the third option this one seems a little bit more realistic not necessarily a cafe but there we are let's try a restaurant see if that would generate something else not too bad this one is a little bit weird gonna ignore that this one I wouldn't be sitting on a table and again you can see my hand it is kind of weird there this will work very well if you're just having a clear stand-up portrait maybe with your hands in front of you so let's see if I can find a picture like that okay let's try this one select subject select inverse and then generative fill so maybe I want to stand somewhere else I would let's say type in a London street and of course once it's done this selection you can make slight adjustments so that it is perfect if you want to do that manually but I'm just doing it purely off of the AI and not making any other adjustments and this is actually pretty good it actually feels like I'm there on one of these streets in London it's a very quick and easy maybe if you want to change your location your backgrounds of your portraits to make it more realistic I think that's very nice if you hit generate button again I believe it should bring up more variations than the ones that it gives you on the first round yep there you see you have various different choices and all in all it actually looks very nice and very clean and of course you can make other enhancements you can add filters to this just to add a bit more reality to it but all in all this is a very fast and convenient way of changing your images your portraits your photos of whatever it may be and adding a lot of new things into your pictures however you like maybe I'll just try one more thing and I will select this portion of the house and let's say I'll add a fire pit there so adding brand new objects into a picture might also be a very good option not too bad actually not too bad that looks quite nice so there you have it that is basically how generative fill works hopefully that was a very quick and easy tutorial of this brand new feature and I'm really excited to see where Adobe take this in the very near future so hopefully you found that useful and it gives you an idea on all the basics and all of the things that you can do with generative fill if you are going to download this and try it out I'd like to hear your thoughts on how you found the experience drop a comment down below Hopefully, you know, you found that really useful. And if you did, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Peace.